All right, so this is how it is. So it sits down there, comes down there, so that you're not setting. Normally, it would have ended right here, and then the uh, bottom of the radio actually would get scratched up. So now we don't have none of that problem. We just have this piece where I uh, just printed the another one, but um, some of these things, the holes probably aren't drilled correctly. Um, so I'm going to have to get a little bit more accurate with that. That's going to entail moving these things around. These two were actually custom drilled um, because the screw holes actually were not printed so one thing i noticed though is with both pieces here this piece is a little bit um is it uh too long because it's bowing in so um maybe a little adjustment is necessary there um but all in all I think this is a, a lot better of protection, especially compared to the uh, $69 set of rails that Ray Doddity sells. Um, the rails normally just go where these screws are. So with this design that I came up with was off of the other version, which uh, would stop right here basically. And I didn't like that, so I, I went and redid them. <laughs> Honestly, it was easier to, to redo these uh, than it was to do the holes in them. The holes were the, just really difficult because what happened was I mirrored the image. So this is a new one, and I don't know if the holes are going to be in the right spot or not. So um, I have got... Uh, I don't see any shifting so I've got to make a mirror image of this one and um, get a little bit of stringing uh, this is that um, over over what overture uh, PLA I don't I don't personally care for it so if we look here this is going to be our top piece and just get an idea they actually look like they're in the right spot and then my bottom piece um, one of them's out too far kind of what I figured um, so uh, that one right there is out too far so basically this is pretty good right here and it's wrong here a little bit um, and we look over here we can see that part comes up near the front pick this up here okay so we'd be looking at this sitting there like that and we want this to be right about there, somewhere around there. So because the design is a little bit different, it's not going to line up over there anymore. So actually, I should probably change this piece and um, take off a little bit of that because um, we, we can bring it out a little further. And it would offer a little bit more protection. So I, I think maybe that would be my next uh, modification to um, widen that piece. So some sort of birdie right here. So this radio does have a lot of birdies. But I think most of them aren't super bad. I 
you can see that one right there. That one's pretty bad. I'm not sure um, if that has uh, some effect on this. A ten tuner. There's also some kind of one right there. Let's see here, let me turn that off. Okay, let's go up to band. Okay. Wait, that's bad. All right, I'm not going to worry about that band. I don't use that band. We can see them right here. So they're not too bad because I can't hear them. Okay, so there's one right there. multiples I don't know what that is I, I see it but I don't hear it That one's terrible. I don't have my RF gain up all the way either. So if I did... That damn thing is 20 over. So when you have your RF gain up all the way on this radio, it's going to look like a whole nightmare. You see a lot of noise. <laughs> to make everything look way worse. But shouldn't the RF game be up at 100%? So I don't know. What I do is I leave it at 60. Right where the noise floor disappears. And then all of a sudden all that stuff's gone. But anyway, it's still very bad. Right. There's basically a birdie in every band. And if you watch, you can see them move. I just think Zygu should quit putting out more radios and fix the problems that they're already selling. But no, now they've got this new piece of crap that 
has some weird transmit bias issue. So unfortunately, when you buy um, a sub $1,500 radio that tries to be like the 705, you're going to have problems. So it's up for you to decide whether or not these problems are worth it or not. The biggest problem is that a lot of guys on YouTube, <clears throat> they get these radios to review. Generally speaking, Ray Doddity doesn't give these radios to anybody for free. Boy, that's horrible. So, generally speaking, they um, want them back. They let them test them. And they usually have them send them to the next person, etc., etc. So, basically... These guys aren't really getting free radios, but they're still hiding. They're hiding all the problems with these radios, and they're minimizing it because this is a uh, really bad one there. Because they don't want to get cut off. And Ray Doddity is really, really bad about if you don't give them a good review. Um, they strive for 100% positive feedback on Amazon, and I imagine that their behavior is very similar with other things. And they will take care of their customers. That's definitely important to them, but they will also pay people to make favorable reviews. Or at least uh, very um, encourage um so at least that's been my personal experience with them dealing with them uh on certain things and like i said they were really good about you know helping the customer but um they um they asked me to write a five-star review when it wasn't a five-star radio and it's not this one it was the gc5 handheld um that i purchased on amazon and I wrote a bad review on it and they saw the bad review like months after the fact and they reached out to me and I told them I said it's a dirty spurious radio and it's locked and it's useless and I can't use it for anything and they said well um, we'll just return it and I said well I've had it for a couple of months and I can't return it and they said well we'll give you your money back so they did and then after they did that they said, could you please change your review to five star? And I said, well, why? The radio's not five star. Your customer service might be, but the radio's not. You need to fix the radio. And they said, well, could you please just give us a five star review anyway or something? They, they were, they're very persistent. And I said, I can change the review and I can rewrite the, v the review, but I cannot recommend this radio to anybody um, I'm not the only one uh, that's reviewed this radio, and I said, you guys know there's something wrong with this radio, so you want me to lie, you know, and I just never heard back from them after that point, um, so I tried to give them what they wanted, you know, and I didn't tell them I have a YouTube channel or anything like that, I, I, I'm not... Uh, a long time ago, I reached out to a lot of different radio companies and said, Hey, I have a YouTube channel, and I really like to review stuff. Uh, currently, I usually just buy stuff and review it. Um, but that never worked, so I, I just don't even bother anymore because, um, <clears throat> basically, um, I can make like about 150 to $200 a month on the channel and buy a couple of HTs and, and review them and give them away, and it's not a big deal. Um, or I can buy them with my personal money, but, um, nobody's sending me HF radios to review, so, you know, I just, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, stick to doing what I'm doing, you know, I don't want to be dealing with these companies, because if you really pay attention to what's going on, 
you'll see that um, there's some shady stuff going on, and you can't trust these guys that do reviews on these radios. Half of them are on the take. So we'll continue to keep putting out honest reviews here. I don't know about this radio. You know, um, it's got problems. Um, I don't know how bad it is up here, but I heard it's bad. So, it just depends. I mean, if it was a little bit cheaper, I think it would be even more tempting. Um, I think I'll probably end up sending it back, maybe. I mean, it was like f almost $600. Um, now, some people say they don't have all these spurs. And like I said, if I turn up my RF gain all the way, we're going to see lots of stuff. It's going to look really bad. So when they send it to you, the RF gain is not at, at 100. It's at like 40 or 50. And I think they've done that on purpose because they don't want you to see all the noise. Look at it. It's 20 over. Okay, now if we turn our RF gain down to 60, it's still S9. So it's pretty bad. Like, you're not going to be able to hear anybody on this frequency. I don't know what frequency this is. crank the RF gain back up. I've never had a radio where I ran the RF gain low on purpose. S9. I mean, do we even need to go through the entire band? We can see there's just going to be birdies everywhere. So, and there's no antenna. Now, I've tried this with a dummy load, too. Same results. Alright. So there's a bunch down here too. Let's go to the top. Okay. When you hear a noise like that, that is definitely in the radio. S9. With uh, RF gains up at a hundred percent. So, is the radio usable? Yeah, it's usable. Let me get this off of that mode. It's totally usable, but if you happen to want to have a QSO where one of these birdies are, you're gonna have to move. You're going to have to explain to the people you're talking to. I can't talk to you here. I got birdies. I 
It does that weird, like, skip. And I think that's, like, the IF moving. Just a function of how SDRs work. That's pretty loud. So I that sounds like somebody tuning up, and I don't even have any antenna hooked up. Let's wait a while and see what this is. Really strange. Seems to be repeating some type of pattern. You see over here, this one's moving too. That might not be the radio. Although when I move it here, I swear it sounds like somebody tuning up. But nobody's going to tune up for that long. Really? I mean, maybe. So we're just waiting for them to stop, you know, like, you think it's somebody tuning, but it, I don't think it is. Alright, so it's not changing. So there you go, there's the birdie machine. <laughs> 